instead of immediately playing A3, allowing black to compromise white's pawn structure. A popular choice is to turn the game into the classical variation with queen c2. By supporting the knight on c3, white is ready to play a3 and gain the bishop pair without damaging the pawn structure. This move also supports a future e4, grabbing more space in the center. Queen c2 is an excellent choice, but it still has some drawbacks to keep in mind. Notice the d4 pawn is no longer protected, and this move also delays developing the king side. With these points in mind, this allows black to add pressure against the unprotected d4 pawn with c5 or knight c6. Black may also decide to simply grab space in the center with d5. And another solid choice to consider is simply castling the king. Just like in many other lines in the Nimzo, black remains flexible, waiting to see how white will continue before committing to a particular pawn structure. White's most common idea is to play a3. But if white tries to strike in the center immediately with e4, as long as black plays actively, white will not be able to roll over black's position. An instructive response for black is to strike back in the center with d5. Preparing counterplay after e5. White takes space and attacks the knight, but it does allow black to jump in the center with knight e4. Adding pressure against the pin knight, when after bishop d3, black is able to counter strike in the center with c5. Emphasizing that white's center is far from stable, especially as white's king remains stuck in the center for the time being. Black enjoys good counterplay against white's ambitious choice. Rather than making the double-edged decision to take space in the center immediately with e4, white's main point is to collect the bishop pair with a3. Bishop takes c3 check. Queen takes c3. White enjoys the bishop pair, but black has a lead in development and may later gain time against the exposed queen on c3. One popular option for black is to grab space in the center with d5. And another solid choice is b6. Preparing the typical queenside theme keto. White's dark squared bishop can enter the action by pinning black's knight with bishop g5. When black takes control of the long white squared diagonal with bishop b7. One of white's most active ideas is to fight for control of the center, as well as important white squares with f3. Blunting black's light squared bishop, as well as supporting the e4 square. Black can put the question to the bishop with h6. And since white's opening strategy focuses on preserving the bishop pair, it makes sense to maintain the tension with bishop h4. We can now see another point behind f3. It allows the bishop to support the center with bishop f2 if necessary. Black certainly doesn't want to allow white to expand freely in the center. So a sensible reply is d5. Taking space in the center and discouraging e4. White can now support the center and prepare to develop the king side with e3. When black continues to develop with the solid knight b to d7. Supporting the other knight as well as preparing the thematic pawn break c5. One idea for white is to open the c file with c takes d5. Opening up the c file and revealing pressure against the c7 pawn. The point is if black plays e takes d5, certainly not a bad move within itself, white will not be under any serious pressure, so white can play bishop d3, preparing to build an initiative with the bishop pair. Instead of this automatic recapture, black can take some of the sting out of white's plans with the surprising knight takes d5. Attacking the queen and revealing the tension between black's queen and white's dark squared bishop. After the queen trade bishop takes d8 and knight takes c3, if white plays bishop takes c7, not only does this open up the c file which can benefit black's superior development, black can respond with knight d5, attacking the bishop in e3 pawn. So white typically plays bishop h4. Black's knight is able to move to safety and attack the center with knight d5. So white sensibly defends the center with bishop f2. White enjoys the bishop pair and is prepared to expand in the center with e4. Since e4 will weaken the d4 pawn, a natural idea for black is to respond with c5, adding pressure against the d4 pawn. White's bishop pair will remain a long-term factor, but black's solid position and easy development should promise an interesting strategic game filled with plenty of chances for both sides. Instead of immediately trying to gain the bishop pair with a3 or queen c2, white can focus on developing the king side and supporting the center with e3. This is one of White's most popular systems against the Nimzo, known as the Rubenstein Variation. E3 supports the center, prepares kingside development, and one day this pawn will often try to move to E4, 
grabbing more space in the center. You could spend an entire lifetime exploring all of the interesting variations in the Nimzo, including blockading the C4 pawn and striking in the center with C5, castling the king and preparing D5, and another interesting idea is B6. This move is very much in the spirit of the Nimzo. Instead of directly occupying the center with pawns, Black plans to observe the center from a distance by fiend kettling the light squared bishop on the long diagonal. Against b6, White's most straightforward response is bishop d3. Starting to develop the king side and preparing a future e4 idea. The battle for the light squares continues with bishop b7. Preventing White from playing e4, as well as attacking the g2 pawn. So a sensible continuation is knight f3. Developing the knight as well as blocking the light squared bishop's pressure against the g2 pawn. Once again, Black has several options, including castling the king, adding pressure against the center with c5, or Black can even decide to occupy the center directly with knight e4. Blockading the e3 pawn, as well as adding pressure against the pin knight. White can combine defense and attack by playing queen c2, supporting the pin knight, as well as attacking the knight on e4. Black can now reinforce the center with f5. Refusing to give ground and maintaining the tension in the center. After white castles the king to safety. It's important to remember that the c3 knight is not pinned forever. So now the knight is threatening to win material with knight takes e4. Black can voluntarily surrender the bishop pair with bishop takes c3. b takes c3. Compromising white's pawn structure with the idea of trying to preserve the light squared blockade in the center. 